So, ladies and gentlemen, look at the work which we done. Yeah. First, uh, we define the, uh, the conceptual basis of formation of uh, global world economy. This was the first item of uh, our survey about the formation procedure of uh, uh, global economy. This was the first basic concept. The second phase is second item, uh, a feudal, a feudal medieval European economy. We two poles, a northern poles, southern poles, and the meeting point between the northern and the southern pole, this, uh, poles, this is the uh, fair of Champagne and Brie in the eastern part of France. This is the first construction. The second construction of uh, uh, formalizing the global economy, which directed by Venice. Venice, this is the northern Italian city. In the last lecture, we started survey how directed, how organized Venice and the Venetian merchant, all of European and uh, a little bit larger than European, Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, uh, reached European construction. One of the most important peculiarity of Venetian commercial trade that no innovation which invented in the city. Uh, this survey, this was the last slide. The first uh, introduction, first minting of gold coins introduced by Genoa. Uh, check and bill of exchange artificial money introduced by Florence. Holding companies, small uh, stakeholders introduced by Florence, double entry bookkeeping similarly introduced by Florentine merchant, maritime insurance introduced Florentine uh, timekeepers, first regularly sealing between Flanders Low Country and Gibraltar and northern part of Italy organized by Genoese sailors. Search of direct routes toward Westwar to Indies introduced by Brother Vivaldi, a Genoese slave. No invention, no crucial invention which invented in Venice. But Venice played a typical adaptivity, a typical second phase adaptiveness. And this was the basic reason of great success of Venice was able to adapt everything. Each introduction picked a uh, different part of the, of the world, different part of uh, uh, European cities, the most important and most efficient uh, innovation. Very important, we uh, discussing about uh, geographical places, but very important, look at, at, uh, look at the atmosphere of the city. Therefore, a very short, short video I show to you about Venice. Who visited Venice yet? Okay, half of the audience never. Therefore, maybe uh, it's a good thing to see only three or four minutes a video about Venice. Very important to see atmosphere, historical. Some of the city's finest architectural tours, but there are now greater than 
of uh, Budapest after this bishop. Gerlert was born in Venice and he was the founder of uh, Episcopal district of Chanad, this district around the second. And he was first great, uh, how the name is, uh, uh, is uh, European uh, person, European uh, uh, viewpoints person who organized the international connection uh, into the direction of, uh, of uh, cultural center of Europe. And this is the basic reason, historical reason, a strong connection between Sagat and a lot of symbols of the Sagat. For example, uh, in uh, uh, other square of Sagat, uh, uh, beside the, beside the uh, how the name is, Cafe uh, Acapella, which, which square? Close up, thanks a lot. Close uh, square, there is a, a sculpture with four lions with wings similarly. And this is the basic reason one it happened one million years ago. Okay, turn back. Uh, this is the place of uh, stock of exchange. Stock of exchange. Uh, in consequence of climate, Mediterranean climate, not, not necessary to construct a building for stock of exchange. It's an open place, a square, and uh, brokers walking on the on the square and and with the notebook. Not the same, it's a, it's a paper based notebook, and uh, change uh, products and information and everything. Why? Because the basic function of stock of exchange is communication. Not technological based, but personal based or based uh, communication. This was the location. On the rain time, escape to the covered area of the square. Uh, it was a place, square of uh, church, San Giacometto. Okay, uh, but one of the most important innovation of Venetian Republic was the Galer da Mercato. This was a, uh, a, a commercial, uh, commercial construction and uh, somehow a state uh, innovation. The basic problem, not only in the case of Venice, but whole of Europe, that 14th century was the age of crisis. This was the crisis, uh, a great plague period, black death, one third of European population for one decade disappeared, died. In the time of crisis, somehow the state tried to help for Venetian enterprises. Uh, the most important uh, uh, innovation that the most important devices of international trade financed by state, which was Galera de Mercato. The Galera de Mercato were vessels, commercial ships, which organized the international trade on the uh, Mediterranean Sea. It's quite a large and standardized uh, commercial, uh, commercial vessel. The size changed between 100 and uh, 300 tons. It's uh, named according to uh, uh, items of uh, contemporaries, uh, 50 cartloads, quantity of uh, products able to sell. And uh, constructing this uh, commercial vessel in the Arsenal. Arsenal, not a uh, uh, club of London, not football club, Arsenal, the greatest factory of shipbuilding. It's one district of uh, Venice, founded in uh, uh, one. Uh, okay, coming on. Uh, 11 4. And which was the most important uh, uh, commercial uh, support uh, invention of, uh, of state? The state financed the construction of, ship, of ships, financed the shipbuildings. Why? Because uh, uh, ships, it's very, shipbuilding and the construction of ships, very expensive. Therefore, on the time of crisis, it was a great challenge for a uh, merchant invent to the shipbuilding. Therefore, the state from huge income, huge uh, budget of the city-state was able to finance uh, uh, ships and 
organize a chartering of ships. Uh, it's possible to loan whole of the whole of the vessel, all of the ship, or one part of the ship. Therefore, Venetian merchant, merchant not necessarily construct or buy whole of the whole of the ships. It's financed by uh, state, which was the most I don't know why so scattered. Okay, uh, which was the, the reason of decline of Venice because the age of Venice started with the peace treaty of Turin uh, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the 14th century and closed at the turn of 15th and 16th century, which was the reason of decline of the city-state. The first reason, reason, regeneration of European territorial state. Uh, probably you remember that after the uh, Black Death period, one third of Europeans died. Therefore, the tax uh, payers of territorial state decreased so large, uh, uh, large number that income of territorial state shrunk. Therefore, the flourish, heyday of the Venice, Ven uh, Venetian uh, Republic, it was a relative, uh, a relative recovery. But in the following century, 15th century, regenerated all of European society. Look at the diagram. This is the diagram probably you remember. I draw in two lectures ago. In the second century, European population estimated a little bit under 50 million. Uh, on the critical century, the most critical century of uh, age of migration, it's uh, decreased to 20 million. Because no any uh, uh, state, no any uh, sh uh, shelter for contemporaries, only the blood of, re blood of revenge. To the 10th century, regenerating European state, regenerating, uh, recover uh, European society, and reach again approximately because no census in this time, therefore these data estimation, but quite reliable estimation. Reach again approximately 50 million. And to the 14th century, reached a critical high 90 million. This is the recovery trajectory of European demographical, uh, demographical uh, process. But in consequence of overpopulation, in the middle of 14th century, one third of European population disappeared in consequence of black death. But to the end of 15th century, European population regenerated, regenerated, recovered. And what happened? In the following century, until the 14th century, our European population frozen down under a demographical city. For three, two and a half century, until the middle of 18th century, waving under 100 million. And no up, no down, no disaster, no demographical disaster again. And in consequence of industrial revolution, the European population at the, at the end of the 18th century broke up. But for early modern time, it's frozen over, stabilized or pushed down the European population. Okay. Anyway, a territorial state which based on redistribution, paying in the tax and fees, regenerating after the crisis. The second one, in the eastern, uh, southeastern part of Europe, appeared a new enemy. A new enemy, a uh, Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire judged as a continental empire, uh, but occupied step by step a continental uh, force. The first great strike for Eastern uh, Christian community siege and occupation of Constantinople in the middle of uh, the 15th century. The next Kaffa occupation of Kaffa, Kaffa located uh, to the Crimean Peninsula, recently is a part of Russia. 
former time in Ukraine, of course. Uh, occupation of Syria, and finally, occupation of Egypt. But for a long time, a general, uh, general opinion in the circle of European politicians is no danger. Why? Because the Turkish are and were a continental people, no free. But one year to other seize a feat. Free, free. How? How was able Ottoman Empire organize a trade, great military fleet? This is a guess. It's not easy to construct the ships. It's a lot of years necessary to train sailors. I guess they just learned from the Greeks and from the Egyptians. No. They just learned it from the... No, no, one year to learn. Yeah. How was it? Oh, no, it's not so easy. They just captured a, a great uh, engineer, Greek engineer, maybe. No. <laughs> Who are the best sailors? Who are the best sailors? Pirates! Pirates! There is a piracy. A piracy is very, quite a popular in northern part of Mediterranean Sea. Christian piracy, a southern part of Mediterranean Sea, uh, mainly the most important uh, part of the, of the Muslim piracy is the northern part of Africa. And the one uh, embassy, ambassador of the uh, Ottoman Empire traveled to Tunis to the greatest harbor of pirates and organized a deal. The most important head of pirates. It's named Hayreddin Barbarossa. And invited to the Divan. Divan, this is the uh, uh, central council of Ottoman Empire and officialized the pirates and became official soldier of Ottoman Empire. It was a genial, genial. It's a genius who suggested to the, uh, uh, not Su Selim, Selim uh, was the father of uh, uh, Sulaiman the Great, uh, the most uh, famous uh, sultan of, uh, of Ottoman Empire. From pirates organized the great Ottoman free and four First, first half of 16th century dominated all of the Mediterranean Sea. The first strike for Venice was the ge geographical discoveries. Uh, uh, a lot of nations participated, uh, a lot of four nations, states uh, participated in geographical discoveries. The first uh, great discoverer are uh, Portuguese, a Portugal Empire. The second are uh, Spaniards. A Spanish Empire. Which other nation organized the great discovery? Besides Portuguese and Dutch. 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 Important. Dutch. Free. English. English. French. French. And left only one. Italian. 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 No, no, no. Italian uh, as. Uh, uh, Partic participate. Why? Because uh, Columbus, Amerigo Vespucci, but not state level. Only personal entrepreneur. Genoa? Genoa? No, it's really not. Really not. Because Genoese uh, had uh, uh, employees of Portuguese and Spaniards. State level. English, Dutch, French, uh, Spanish, and uh, Portuguese. Five. But left? One. Vikings. No? Viking, it's happened five years, five, uh, five, uh, five uh, centuries before. Germans? No Germans. Uh, Germany, in this time, it's uh, gr in great crisis. This is the uh, se uh, following century, 17th century age of 30 years war. One third of Germans died or emigrated from Germany, large part to uh, Americas, which is the sixth nation in the great ge geographical discoveries. Russia, it's very important, but not uh, seaborne uh, discoveries, but continental. But uh, occupation and discovery of Siberia is the same operation. 
Greece not, no, no. Russian, Russian gold. Uh, Greece, it's not. Uh, it's happened in antiquity. Yeah. It's a great discoveries of uh, of Greece. Uh, according to according to some legends, the Greek sailors sailed even to Iceland. It's not very far, but uh, there is a lot of legend that calculated with help of maps and. Uh, estimated that it's maybe because uh, identified that uh, uh, sailed across the uh, Gibraltar and sailed to until the Britain, England, recent uh, British eyes, and uh, sailed some direction northward. It's not it's possible, not true, but uh, it's maybe a great uh, uh, re discovery of the antiquity. But in the early modern time, on the age of great discovery, these six nation, nations perform the most important discoveries. Okay, look at the new situation. Regenerated territorial state, the most dangerous for Venetian uh, Republic, France and Spain. Invasion of Ottoman Empire and the last strike, geographical discoveries. Look at the geographical discoveries, which were the most important reasons of geographical discoveries, the causes. The first continuation of reconquest, reconquest of Iberian Peninsula started in early Middle Ages, and in the most important social consequences of uh, reconquest, continuous war, continuous war time against the Muslim state, a large proportion of nobility. Look at, for example. Uh, ideal type of society, ideal type is a France, which is the proportion? One person of society in the French kingdom, one person, nobleman, nobility. Ten persons, bourgeois, and nine, uh, eighty, nine persons, uh, peasantry. This is the norm, European norm. Look at Spain. In the case of Spain, nobility. 15%. Why? Why? It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's the greatest proportion. The basic reason of high proportion of nobility, a continuous war. Because in normal case, like in France, which is the basis of life of nobleman, is state. Is state. And the quantity of estate limited. Therefore, the proportion of nobility is similar. Upper limit one person. But in the case of Spain, there is a continuous war, 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 war time. And majority. Two third of large number of nobility income came from war, fruit of war, fruit of war. Blackmail, for example, uh, uh, there is a plundering, uh, uh, a conquered area, a lot of fruit. It's, it's, uh, it's a higher, higher editing of, of, uh, of uh, uh, real practice, a fruit of war. Therefore, no war. No income. Therefore, a Spanish nobility, nobility tried to organize and reorganize a new war. After occupation, whole of the Iberian Peninsula tried to find new place for continuation of conquest. The first idea was <coughs> a Northern Africa. A lot of times, a Spanish army tried to occupy northern provinces of Africa without success. Lost each battle. Okay, it's not functional. And when starting the great discovery, first step in Africa, and the second phase is in America, supported by noblemen. Not by chance, for example, the first uh, uh, conqueror of Aztec Empire, Hernando Cortes, a typical professional soldier. No income, only war. Therefore, large part 
of Spanish nobility, the condition of survival, finding new place for conquest. If no income, it's shrank down to peasantry. Okay, first reason, large proportion of nobility in Iberian Peninsula. Uh, the second reason, Christian church missionary ambition. A Christian church would like to proliferate, proliferate uh, uh, the faith, the Christian uh, faith, and time by time each discovery supported by Christian church. Not by chance, in the second travel of Columbus, transported six monks, Benedictine monks, to the New World. A church, a Christian church, supported our discoveries. Uh, I told about the Turkish conquest in uh, north, uh, southwest, south, southeastern part of the Mediterranean Sea, which uh, functioned a barrier for eastern trade, to the direction of the eastern trade. And finally, a precious metal hunger. It's not a direct precious metal hunger because nobody would like to eat. Uh, a precious metal. What do you mean the precious metal handle? Maybe Europeans have exploited all the uh, metal in life. Not only exploited. Somebody know which was the most important places of uh, precious metal mining in the Middle Ages? Which countries? Scandinavian? No? Sorry? I'm asking about the mine. Mine mining of uh, silver and gold. No, Africa, in Europe, in, in, in Middle Ages. Hungary, Hungary, Hungary and uh, Bohemia, Bohemia and Czechia, not Czech Republic, uh, Czechia, Czechia. Uh, in uh, silver, Hungary was the first and Czechia the second. In gold, Czechia was the first and Hungary the second. This was the most important uh, part of, uh, of uh, uh, mining, uh, precious metal mining. How disappear the coins? How disappear the precious metal in, from Europe? Because disappear time by time. They, they it to India and China. Yeah, Eastern Asian trade. Why? Because uh, uh, sorry, develop, developing level, developing level of economy in Asian 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 world, uh, including India and China, much higher. Therefore, no European products which interested for uh, Asian trader. Europe wasn't able to buy uh, Asian products, spice, silk, and any other Asian products, only for precious metal. Therefore, pushed out, pushed out like a, uh, a water, not water, precious metal pump, pushed out the money. Coins pushed out, pushed out. Not by chance, recently in archaeological sites found a huge quantity of European coins from uh, Rom uh, Roman Empire to uh, the Dutch Republic. Because continuously pushed out. But very interesting, very interesting, in the late 18th and early 19th century, with help of commercial devices, the precious metal pump turned back and from China with commercial devices pumped out the precious metal. Somebody know how? How was organized European, more exactly English, English trader, employees, merchant of English East India Company turned back this procedure and pumped out uh, precious metal from China. How? Do you know the opium war? Opium? Opium? This is a drug. Opium, it's a everyday using goods, uh, products in India. But nobody knew in China. Proliferated by European trader. In the late 18th century, European traders were a dealer in China. Therefore, China closed the, closed the boundaries. 
because it's opium, it's it's very very dangerous drug. The people who consume became addicted very quickly, and European state, United States, England, France, or Germany, Spain, uh, ask opening the boundary and the free trade uh, opposite the Chinese government. And the final solution, final solution of this situation, to open war and destroy the commercial barriers and open the way for opium. And opium, it was the, the, the covering offer, but the basic reason is open for uh, European and, and, and uh, modern countries' uh, uh, products, for modern countries, uh, developed countries' products, uh, Chinese market. Okay, but this was the first operation, commercial operation, when the precious metal pump turned back. But until the turn of the 18th and 19th century, flowing of precious metal one way to the direction of India and China. Basically, these were the most important uh, reason uh, European turned toward uh, geographical discoveries. Which was the most important device of geographical discoveries? Uh, the first condition of geographical discovery is technical innovation. Introduce new ships. New ships. The most important innovation are caravans. A caravans. Why necessary to innovate, uh, develop a new fleet? Look at, for example, uh, who sailed on the, on the sea and ocean? Who sailed yet? Nobody. Because this is a continental country, only the Lake Balaton, this is a possibility for sailing, but very moderate uh, dimension. Okay, which is the most important uh, uh, condition of, uh, of, uh, uh, for construction of the size of ships? Each sea and ocean, there is a typical size of waves. For example, in the Mediterranean Sea, depend on the size of sea and the speed of uh, wings. For example, in the Mediterranean Sea, the size of wave of water, for example, 30 meters. In the Indian Ocean, 40 meters. Atlantic Ocean, 50 meters. Which is the ideal uh, size of uh, ships which constructed to Baltic Sea, Mediterranean is different because uh, necessary to construct one ship able to cover a normal size of waves. This is the good solution. But one ship which constructed to the Mediterranean Sea, no optimal for example, Indian or Atlantic Sea. Why? Because it's able to cover the distance, this, uh, distance between the mouth of wave and no floating and uh, quite, uh, quite balanced manner floating on the water. But in Atlantic Ocean, it's go up, go up, unstable. Two solutions of this problem. One solution which introduced by Norsemen, Vikings. A very small, very small ship. It's go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down. It's usable everywhere because very small. Other solution construct a huge, a huge vessel. Lot of 10 meters. Usable not only Mediterranean Sea, but everywhere. Compatible for each sea. And Caraval, Caraval was the first sea which was compatible everywhere on the global ocean. It's very important innovation. Not by chance, on the time of antiquity, the seas of Greek fleet not usable. Not usable even in the Bay of Biscay in the, north, in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Not usable. Not by chance, 
that Mediterranean ships very rarely left the Mediterranean area. Very rare, very rare. Okay, a new one, a new, uh, is the second innovation, a sailing system. Very complicated, not the best example because it's only uh, two months uh, vessel construction, it's quite simple, but in Europe, during the late Middle Ages, developed very, very sophisticated uh, sailing system. In European sailing system, European ship's sailing system, was able to sail in front of the direction of wind. Paradox. This is the direction of wind and a vessel, sailing vessel, not engine, sailing vessel was able to sail in front of the sea. Direction. How possible? It's part of so much. In front of the sea. Wind, sorry, not sea. Wind. Maybe they could change the, the they could turn the sail. Huh? No. Wind direction is in front of the vessel, but was able. In very complicated operation, zigzag, 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 zigzag. The side wind turn in the very complicated uh, construction of the sailing system, but it's very slow, very slow manner. But the complicated, very sophisticated sailing system was able to solve this problem. Zigzag, 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 zigzag. <laughs> Why? Why important? Because in the backward situation, it's great advantage compared with the Chinese and, uh, and, uh, and Indians, Indian vessels. <laughs> European sailing system more complicated and was able so great performance even sail in front of uh, uh, in front of the uh, direction of wind. Okay, the next uh, great innovation. A movable cannons and movable muskets, and final, which based on the gunpowder. In which country invented the gunpowder? China. China, of course. Why didn't use in China? Because dangerous and necessary, a long uh, uh, developing procedure for taking reliable the firearms. In China, not necessary. Why? Because in China, very high population, very populous uh, civilization, much easier to organize a traditional uh, manner, a traditional, uh, with have a traditional weapons, a great army. In, in Europe, much lower the density of population. Therefore, in former time, former lecture, I spoke about, time by time, European, it's open for technical innovation. Why? Because never was and were enough people for solving the problems. And compass invented in China, similarly. But somebody know which kind of the compass used by Vikings. Because the Vikings were able to sail in the Atlantic Ocean, the open sea. How? They were using the sun. Yeah, but it's a sun. How use the sun? Because it's, it's true. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I'm so sorry Yeah, basically use a, a sun compass. Sun compass. Uh, the knowledge is about the sun compass disappeared. Why? Because a Vikings, the knowledge is about the sea currents, direction of the wind. It was the fortune of family, of the class, and no never written down, uh, written down. And after the Christianizing of Viking community disappeared. But in archaeologists reinvented. It's a little bit the uh, same that uh, a sundial. One stick and uh, on the plate there is some information and with help of this uh, sundial was able to navigate in open sea with help of position of uh, uh, with help of position of sun. But very interesting, 
sundial, sundial of Vikings more reliable than the magnetic compass. Why? Why reliable? Why was reliable the Viking sun uh, compass compared with the magnetic compass? It's geographical peculiarity, but maybe interesting. Of course, no, no change, not the same than arithmetical poles, because this is the earth, this is the arithmetical poles, but the magnetic poles not the same position. Therefore, if somebody say in the north, north there is a difference between direction of the magnetic north and the real location of the magnetic north, and because the Vikings used a sun position, no such kind of diversion. Okay. Uh, very important a uh, mapping system. A mapping system which uh, uh, started a uh, scientizing of mapping by the Portuguese later I will speak about. Uh, appear a navigation, appear art to four. Because in the Middle Ages, no complicated military operation. This is the one army, this is the enemy. And riding in the opposite uh, in front of one to one. And in the 15th century and early 16th century, appear art of war, complicated military operations. Why? Translated, this is the age of Renaissance, reinvention of the knowledge of antiquity, and translated the tactical books of general military leader of antiquity. For example, Alexander the Great and the uh, great generals of uh, Sulla, general of, uh, of uh, Republic Age of Rome, translated and started to learn the tactical knowledge. Translated, for example, the famous book of Sun Tse. I don't know if this is the good pronunciation. Sun Tse, about the art of war. Which is the good pronunciation I ask for Chinese students? Chinese students? Who, who are Chinese students? Who? Who? Okay. Uh, there is a, a famous author and general who wrote a book about uh, 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 Art of War. Sun Tse. You don't know. Sun Tse. I don't know because it's not so easy to pronounce uh, the Chinese, uh, Chinese name. Sun Tse, Art of War. Okay, this is the homework. <laughs> In the next uh, occasion, we will return to this problem. Okay, Sun Tse, to my last knowledge, this is the good, good uh, pronunciation. Uh, okay, these were the most important condition of the success of great uh, geographical discovery. Military revolution totally reformed the battlefields. Why? Because during. Sorry? Uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> little bit bad. Uh, my question was, which is the uh, correct pronunciation of famous Chinese general Sun Tse wrote books? Sun Tse. Sun Tse. Okay, it's good across. Sun Tse. Sun Tse. Official version. Okay. Turn back. How we form the firearms, the battlefields? If you are looking at uh, Middle Ages, medieval battlefields, the army based on knights. <coughs> knights to be a knight, knight not only one person, not only one horse and one uh, warrior. No, it's a, it's a unit, unit of army. Unit of army because beside the knights had three, four, five servants, a lot of horses. This is a unit, but very expensive. Training time one night 
was 10 years, 10 years long period. Had to learn a lot of different, using a different form of the weapons. It's very complicated. Great investment. Great financial investment. It's possible for the first battle here tonight and inspire everything. And highest, higher income, greater army. But all that time, in the late Middle Ages, had a lot of poor country, like Spain, for example. And poor countries try to innovate a new military technology. First generation of the muskets is very dangerous, blow up and kill the using people. But very cheap, because used by peasants. For example, hoeing, hoeing on the on the on the railroad land, invite the newcomers. You may be a rookie in the army, open great salary, it's very dangerous, blow up. But develop generation by generation the muskets, and the muskets became reliable. And the first battle, first battle, this is the picture about the first battle which won by muskets, by firearms, battle of Pavia. Pavia this is a city-state in Italy. And uh, won by uh, Spanish muskets. And very cheap to organize a firearms-based army. Why? Because infantry serving infantry necessary four weeks training. Not ten years, four weeks. Very, very cheap. Not by chance, for the next four century, 16, 17, 18, 19, and the early First World War based on infantry similarly, four century, the battlefields whole of the world dominated firearm using infantry, which was, which were the most important infantry of the 16th century. Spanish massacres, I spoke about them. Spanish massacres. The second one, German Landsknecht. It's, it's, it's a, a, Swabian, a Swabian soldier, pikeman's. And Swiss Halberd here. You know which is the Halberd, Halberd. Halberd is a typical peasant weapon. Poor people, no possibility for axis, pike, and uh, hawk unified. So poor people on the mountain use three in one. Pike, ox, and hawk. Not by chance, this is the crisis period in the history of Switzerland. Therefore, one third of Swiss peasant population emigrated from Switzerland and became guest worker, journeyman, and the best paid guest worker, Merci, Merci. And in that time, it's a very brave people uh, on the mountain area trained well and uh, quite the barbarians, but very efficient on the battlefields, battlefields. Not by chance, since 15th century, the Swiss Havelier became the bodyguard of Pope in Rome. Why? Because on that time, the Swiss Havelier, the best warrior, on the European battlefields. And when one uh, infantry out of European culture, a Turkish Yenizuri, Yenizuri, but it's connected to the uh, Christian, Christian uh, world somehow, which is the form of connection. They kidnapped little kids. Uh, not kid, it's a blood tax name. Not kidnapping, not official kidnapping, but blood tax. Okay. And they tend to be in the But there are some there are some peculiarities of the Yenizuri. 
the first security, uh, blood tax only had to pay the second son, the second boy of the family. Why? Because the first born uh, boy had to pay, had to continue the, the, the work and the stay and pay the tax, only the second one. And the second very seminal innovation that Yenizeri Varior, there is a Turkish student on the audience, Turkish student, no Turkish student, it's a pity. Okay, uh, Yenizeri, unbelievable, uh, unbelievable uh, rational inventions used, for example, uh, two thirds of uh, education focuses to learning using different weapons, but one third learn one civil profession. Carpenter, for example, shoemaker. Why? Because it's possible in the first battle injure and lost the capacity for continue the military career. But during the training period, learn a profession, artisan, and continue as artisan. And there is a, one important uh, um, uh, advantage of uh, Yenizari status, like in the Christian world, didn't have to pay tax. It's tax-free position. And after, for example, injury, became a cripple, <laughs> cripple as a tax-free artisan, able to survive and save the living standard. Okay, Yanizer, Yanizer, majority of them Christian or Jews uh, family came. Uh, this was the first battle which won by firearm infantry. Okay, not uh, close the, only close this slide series. Continue. Uh, closed the age of uh, Venice and started the next guiding city. It's named Antwerp. This is the second, and the third is Genoa. Look at the first Antwerp. Geographical discovery. Okay, over. Okay, look at the geographical discovery. The first country which organized the first seminal geographical discovery this is a Portugal. Portugal located a uh, southwestern part of Europe. Southwestern part of Europe. Uh, reconquering of Portugal uh, close to the middle of the uh, 13th century. The second crucial, uh, crucial milestone of uh, Portuguese discovery, founding of headquarters of, uh, of great of uh, great headquarter of organizing center of discovery under direction Henry the Navigator, son of uh, John the First, King of Portugal. The next milestone, capture of Ceuta. This is the northern, uh, most southern part of the Portugal, and finally, ruling years of John the Second, who financed the great geographical discoveries of Portugal from central budget. Look at the key person of Portuguese discovery named Henry the Navigator. Henry the Navigator was third child of King John I of Portugal. No chance, no chance for, uh, for, for ruling uh, the son of king who no chance for ruling there, is, there, are, there were different possibility of career. Maybe bishop Archbishop of Church, maybe General of Army. Option and decision of Henry the Navigator very, um, uh, very, 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 uh, very rare option. He became intellectual. Inter to be intellectual in the traditional age not so popular. He became inter intellectual and merchant. Uh, founded one castle. One castle. It's named Villa do Infante in Sagres Peninsula, southern part of Portugal. And uh, financed his intellectual center 
from the profit of Sahara trade route, Sahara, this is the great desert of northern part of Africa, which motivated by Harry the Navigator. It's a legend. Somebody know the legend of Preston John legend? Preston John legend is a quite popular and quite well-known legend from, uh, in the late Middle Ages and early modern time. Legend of Preston John. No? No? Nobody? Nobody? It's a general legend. It's uh, proliferated in Russia, proliferated in the uh, southern part of America, proliferated in Africa. The, the common element of the legend that behind of barbarian lands, there is a Christian kingdom. And our missions, finding the way to Christian kingdom and saving against the barbarians. There is a, a seed, a real seed of the legend of, of, uh, of Preston John. This is Ethiopia. Ethiopia, a Christian kingdom behind the African, the Muslim and barbarian uh, countries. But generally, it was a, a wide legend, no real background. But uh, Henry the Navigator, as a good, good Christian, motivated finding the country of Preston John. But necessary to finance somehow an uh, uh, expense of, uh, of uh, operation and basically based on African trade. Uh, very easy to, very, very interesting to see the great success of Portugal from from point of view of SWOT analysis. Uh, probably the student of, uh, uh, of uh, Faculty of Economics know well the SWOT analysis. is quite popular, invented in the middle of the uh, 50s. It's quite old. But uh, very interesting and uh, take, into, uh, take into consideration of, uh, of student of uh, art, uh, Faculty of Art, uh, Faculty of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Sciences. Uh, because it's very usable, not only strategic planning, but solving a personal situation, necessary and help a lot uh, finding the best solution, best uh, decision. Basically, the matrix of uh, SWOT analysis separates the aspect of situation. Four guiding uh, separation rules using the SWOT analysis invented by Albert Humphrey. Strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Uh, basically, this is the uh, basic matrix of uh, SWOT analysis. Uh, uh, strengths, helpful, it's supporting, and internal origin. Uh, weakness, harmful, and similarly internal origin. Opportunities, helpful, external origin, and threats, harmful, and uh, similarly external origin. Look at the situation uh, of Portugal in the, 15th, in the 16th century, according to matrix of uh, SWOT analysis. Look at the strengths. Why good country for geographical discoveries? Autonomous power, very autonomous power. Why important? Look at, for example, it's possible, uh, I told to you uh, the exa to, to example of China. China, during the 14th century, organized great discovery based on Chen Ho, Admiral Chen Ho. It's possible not the correct pronunciation. Chen Ho, Admiral, organized a great discovery to the eastern coast of Africa. And the Chinese ships sailed to America one century before Columbus. One century before Columbus. But the Chinese state decided closing of discovery. Why? In consequence of invasion of nomadic people. And the Chinese emperor decided whole of the Chinese capacity turned over a continental, um, uh, continental challenge, continental uh, invasion. And not only closed the discoveries and support financing of discoveries, but burn down of fleet, whole fleet. For two centuries, no Chinese fleet on the Chinese uh, uh, sea and the, the Pacific Ocean. Portugal, independent autonomous power, 
no influence to the Portuguese decision any other any other country. Develop the economy. Not possible to, uh, to, to forget that connected to Muslim countries. Muslim countries in the Middle Ages more developed, more developed than majority of European countries. Therefore, it's, it's a, this is the same situation, for example, in the sport. If somebody, for example, in, the, in the handball or, 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 or ping pong or, or everything, it's weak, able to develop if playing a stronger adversary. This is the same situation in the case of Portugal. Had commercial connection with Muslim countries more developed and pull up the Portugal economy similarly. Large fleet, large fleet is very important because a large fleet, this is the training place, a lot of generation of sailor. Trained sailor, learn generation by generation, and when started the great discovery, re replacing the sailing, sailors, it's very easy. Train sail, train sailor. Weakness, very far from the central area of European economy which was the central area of European economy, northern Italian cities and low country. It's very far from Portugal, therefore this is a weakness. Uh, opportunity, openness toward the ocean. Look at, for example, long coastal area. A lot of excellent place for construction of harbor, construction of ports. But the best is Lisbon. Lisbon. Uh, opportunity in the competition of uh, Mediterranean trade won by Venetian trader and lost by Genoese and Florentine trader. And the Florentine and Genoese trader moved very far. Why? Because the Eastern trade dominated and monopolized by Venetians. And in Portugal economy invested Florentine and Germany Street, a capital. Three, Islamic State. Muslim countries occupy uh, uh, Iberia Peninsula. And until the modern time, not only Portugal, but the Spanish society afraid returning of the Muslim countries. And Big Brother. Behind Portugal had a big brother, brother, this is a Spain. In Portugal elite, Portugal nobility, afraid from Spanish invasion. Not by chance, for one century, at the turn of the uh, 16th and 17th century, uh, Spain occupied whole of the Portugal. It's happened a little bit later. Okay? Look at the Portuguese maritime trade. Portuguese maritime trade based on the coastal trade of Africa, basically Northern Africa, which were the most important products of the Portuguese trade, gold, gold, slave, sorry, and ivory. Not by chance, the coastal area of uh, uh, Guinea, Bay of Guinea, named Ivory Coast, Gold Coast or Slave Coast. This is the Portuguese maritime empire, basically based on coastal area of Africa and later in Brazil, uh, western part of uh, western part of uh, South America. Look at how many Portuguese ships participated in the Asian trade. The flourish and the heyday of great Portuguese trade. This is the first half, first half of 16th century. A Portuguese uh, trade based on Lisbon. Based, somebody visited in Lisbon? Yeah? Not yet. No. Okay. How long? Maybe a week. Which was your impression? Uh. <laughs> Not easy to tell for two sentences. I think uh, there were a lot of uh, old and uh, newer buildings mixed together. Then, but Really, uh, it was a long time, I don't remember much, but I remember <laughs> that uh, there was a car that stopped on the, on the uh, uh, in the 
stay there for like five minutes until the proper came back. So it was a bit chaotic. Yeah, but very interesting. It's possible I mentioned in former time that uh, there are three countries, whole of Europe, where tell we are traveling to Europe. It's possible I mentioned in the former time. Uh, Russia, because it's separated to Europe, England, and the third one is a Portugal. If somebody from Portugal travels even into Spain, tell we are traveling to Europe. But uh, this is the consequence of great influence of England. It's uh, try to copy somehow. The influence of England and the English lifestyle very strong in the case it's uh, for historical reason. Okay. Uh, a Portuguese uh, trader discovered the way to Africa. Bartolomeu Diaz, Bartolomeu Diaz discovered the Cape of Good Hope. But very important, it's only uh, a special information. It's originally Bartolomeu Diaz named to Cape of Storm because it happened a storm on this geographical area. Turn back and his boss, the King John the First, uh, John the Second, renamed. This is the renaming of Portuguese king because in the point of view of king, this is a great hope. Why great hope? Because this is the most southern part of Africa and open the way, open the way to the direction of India and Indian Ocean. And Bartolomeu Diaz discovered and Vasco da Gama, Vasco da Gama sailed first Portuguese to India. Okay. Uh, and sorry, John. A Venetian trader seized the spice in consequence of chain of trade. Indian trader bought the spice over there and transported to the Muslim coastal area. Muslim trader bought from Indian trader, transported to the coastal area of Mediterranean Sea and sold to Venetian trader. And the Venetian trader distributed to Europe. It's a chain of trade, chain of transport. And the Portuguese discovered the direct way to Spice Island and closed out all of the Mediterranean spice trade. Look at the consequences. Look at the consequences. A Portuguese discovered the direct maritime trade. First, precious but the basic problem, the key of international Asian trade, precious but you know why. And German merchant controlled the precious metal trade. Moreover, a Portuguese no commercial network in the continental area. No able, didn't able, wasn't able to distribute the spice. And therefore, Portuguese had to collaborate with Germans. And the meeting point between Germans who had a commercial network and uh, control on the precious metal mine, mining and the Portuguese who organized the direct maritime trade met in Antwerp. It's very special situation. <coughs> Antwerp became guiding city all of the globalizing economy by chance. By chance. No merit. No local merit. This is a meeting point between German and Portuguese. Why? Why ideal place for meeting? The first reason, harbor. Harbor, port on the Shirt River. Necessary. Behind the Antwerp, there was a commercial tradition of law country. What mean the, the custom, the routines, and the commercial network, everything what mean a uh, trade. Crossroads to continental and mainly northern part of Europe. 
quasi-independent country. It's very important, like I mentioned in the case of uh, champagne fairs, the merchant, the bankers, the broker, don't like the strong political program. Rural actor, actors of commercial life finding weak, uh, politically weakly controlled area. And count of Brabant, independent landlords, independent landlords, and weak independent landlords, quasi independent county, without strong political control. Uh, very important peculiarity, this is an official port of German merchant houses, Fugger in Hofwerser, Southern uh, German merchant houses, and very important, very important indicator of commercial and generally economic center are religious toleration. If one area, no religious toleration, indicator of low developed country, and turn down other side and dominated by foreigners. It's only a, a place, a meeting place, no more. Okay, which were the, which, which were the most important actors? One of the most important actors of the international trade, Jacob Fugger. His nickname, Jacob the Rich. He was one of the richest people all of the 16th century. And his best friend, Emperor Charles V. Emperor of absolute power. He was the main counselor of, uh, of Emperor. Look at the spatial network of uh, German merchant houses. You can see two axes. The fir first axis between northern Italy and low country, and the second axis, central Europe, not so developed and Iberian Peninsula. These were the most important economic axis of 16th century. Look at Antwerp. Antwerp first had a first flourishing period, a Portuguese period. In Antwerp, beside the German district, appeared a Portuguese district. A Portuguese trader transported the spice changed to precious metal. And German merchant exported proliferated everywhere in continental Europe. This great recovery period closed a war between Habsburg, it's a Holy Roman Empire, and the French Valois dynasty and paralyzed the international trade for years. The second great period of Antwerp Beside German and Portuguese district appeared a Spanish. Why? Because in New World, in America, found the great silver uh, mining places. And American silver imported to Europe. And unfolded the great triangle international trade. Look at it. America, Africa, and Europe. Europe exported men, animals, and everyday metal products to America. America exported precious metal, mainly silver, and later rum, so spirit, to Europe. Europe exported everyday goods, basically, basically firearms, to Africa. And from Africa imported gold, precious metal, and slave. And exported to America slave. My question, how many percent of African population became victim of slavery for 16th, 17th, and 18th century at the beginning, at the beginning of uh, uh, 19th century, prohibiting the slavery. But the practice survived, but the slave hunting is prohibited. How many percent of African population reached?
20, one offer. Thirteen? Thirteen or thirteen? Thirteen. Thirteen, okay? Twenty, thirty? Thirty. Uh, sorry, <laughs> who, who told you? Thirty. Fifty, okay. Fifty. <laughs> one person, unbelievable. Only one person. The tropical epidemics killed more than the slavery. But one person of slavery destroyed the normal structure of all of the African history. Why? Why? Not the loss of people was the greatest strike, but destroyed the construction of power. Why? Uh, probably you know that uh, free form of power exists in all of the human history. Rational power, traditional power, and charismatic power. Rational power, this is the power based on legal system. Not the people ruling, the right is ruling. This is the first. The second one, the traditional system. The traditional system based on heritage. Somebody may be king because his father was a king. Dynasty. The blood. And the charismatic one, a personal person. Like, for example, Alexander the Great. It's a combination, combining of uh, 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 charismatic, ca charisma, charismatic ruling and the traditional, because his father was a king. Uh, but, uh, for example, Napoleon, nobody, and became emperor of the French Empire. It's a charisma. And in Africa, in that time, as everywhere in the world, the ruling based on tradition. The prince became a king because his father was a king. And appeared Europeans and distributed muskets, firearms. But the African people, not able to construct neither bullets nor gunpowder. You know, this is a commercial land. Had to pay gunpowder and bullets. How possible? With slave. With slave. Ivory and gold. But basically, with slave. Therefore, a history of African countries very special. The greatest empire founded in other part of the, con of the continent. For example, the Great Zimbabwe, Empire of Monomata, and the small state located in the coastal area. No large, large states, large states in a part. But this small state received firearms. In consequence of firearms, a technological gap increased between small coastal states and inner empire. And which is the most important mission of these states, small states? Organizing war. Which is the most important fruit of the war? Slaves. Therefore, introduced new form of the state in the African history. It's named Lord of War. Lord of War. Uh, do you know the movie of uh, Black Hawk Down about Soma uh, Somalia? For Hungarian student, uh, Hungarian name is uh, Shoyo Vekasita. Black Hawk Down. Or, or uh, uh, Blood Diamond. Or Hotel Rwanda. Demonstrate well how function, how function a uh, Lord of Wars. No tradition, no future, no past on the recent time. The loss of population is very moderate, but the construction of state totally destroyed, even now, even now, even now. Because Lord of Wars became a model of forming of state based on violence, no more only violence. Okay, expire the time. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention and wait a little bit.